Imagine never having to stop to fill up or charge your car. Next year, a small company called Aptera Motors is releasing an ultra-efficient EV to try and solve this problem. The Aptera is going to start at only $26,000. It's going to provide a version with over 1,000 miles of range, and it only has a coefficient of drag of 0.13. Let's look at this a little bit deeper, analyze the numbers and see what's going on. And then of course, we're gonna jump into some drag races. So let's jump into a quick list of specs here. This is the 60 kilowatt hour front wheel drive version. Remember this car is three wheels, so only the two front wheels will be driven in this case. It'll have motors in each front wheel, and these motors are provided by a separate company called Elaf. Each motor makes 50 kilowatts, bringing the total power to 100 kilowatts or 134 horsepower. The motors have different characteristics than typical EV motors. They only spin to 1500 RPMs, and there's no reduction ratio. So the torque numbers are huge. It's making 516 foot-pounds in each motor, bringing the total to 1032 foot-pounds, and that's giving this car a top speed of 110 miles an hour. I've set up a drag race using our motor matchup simulation. Let's see what this thing can do in a quarter mile. So we see off the bat, it's accelerating pretty fast for a front wheel drive car. We get a 5.46 zero to 60, and that's with one foot rollout subtracted. And it keeps pulling through the quarter mile, the power starts dropping off, and we see a 14 second quarter mile at 100 miles an hour. Now let's look at their all wheel drive version with a claimed 3.5 second zero to 60. On my screen here is the all wheel drive version. It's really three wheel drive because there's only one wheel in the back, but it's pretty similar to the front wheel drive version. It just has that third motor in the rear. I added 100 pounds to the curb weight. I got this number by taking the actual weight of the motor, 51 pounds as quoted by a laugh, and then adding another 50 pounds for various electronic components, wiring, etc. If you like the video so far, make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Let's jump into the drag race. Okay, so I set up the drag race with the all-wheel drive version. Let's see what it does. So we see a much harder launch. We're getting 100 kilowatts in the front, 50 kilowatts in the rear peak. We get a zero to 60 time of 3.7 with one foot rollout subtracted. And we get a quarter mile at 12.2 at the top speed of the car, 109 miles an hour. This car is seriously fast for a three-wheeled car, although we're not seeing that 3.50 to 60 that they're quoting. I think what they'll likely do is increase power a little bit, maybe up to 60 kilowatts per motor for this version to account for that added weight. Now you've seen how fast it is, but let's talk about efficiency. Will the top of the line 100 kilowatt hour version have a thousand mile range like they claim? In order to find out how efficient this car is, we first need to calculate the weight of the 100 kilowatt hour version. So since we know the curb weight of the 60 kilowatt hour version, I'm going to use that as our reference point to calculate the base weight of the car. So the 60 kilowatt hour version has an 1800 pound curb weight. We're going to use an energy density of 250 watt hours per kilogram. You can also think of this as four kilograms of weight per one kilowatt hour of battery. This brings our pack weight to 240 kilograms. So if you subtract that from the total curb weight of the car, we get a base weight without any battery pack of 576 kilograms or 1,271 pounds. So now we can calculate the curb weight of the 100 kilowatt hour version. We're going to calculate the battery pack weight and add it to the base weight of the car. The battery pack is going to weigh 400 kilograms, 4 kilograms times 100 kilowatt hours. That's equivalent to 882 pounds. We're going to add that to the base weight, and we come out with a final curb weight of 2,153 pounds. So now we know the weight of the 100 kilowatt hour version. Let's test that 1,000 mile claim and see what the range should be on this car. We know the coefficient of drag at 0.13. We're estimated frontal area to be two meters squared, which is really conservative. It's probably lower than that. We're gonna use 60 miles an hour as our velocity, which is equivalent to 26.8224 meters per second. And we know that the forces acting on the car will be air resistance and rolling resistance. The equation for air resistance is force of drag is equal to one half rho, which is the density of air, multiplied by the velocity squared, multiplied by the coefficient of drag, multiplied by the frontal area. And rolling resistance takes the equation force of rolling resistance is equal to the coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the normal force. The normal force is just the weight of the car. So we do the math and we see that to overcome aerodynamic drag at 60 miles an hour, we need about three kilowatts. And to overcome rolling resistance, we need 3.8 kilowatts. Putting all that together, we know that we need almost seven kilowatts of power to overcome rolling resistance and air resistance at 60 miles an hour. If we divide that 6.9 kilowatts into 100 kilowatts, we know that we can drive for 14.44 hours, and that's at a constant speed of 60 miles an hour. That gives us an estimated range of 866 miles with an efficiency of 115 watt hours per mile. This is assuming the powertrain is 100% efficient, which it will not be. I'm gonna use 94% efficiency as the number, and I'll tell you why later. 
but if you use 94% efficiency, that brings the projected range down to 814 miles and the consumption at 123 watt hours per mile. So we're not quite seeing that thousand mile range that Aptera is claiming. Keep in mind that I did use a pretty conservative frontal area at two meters squared. It might be closer to one meter squared. This would bring down the power required for overcoming air resistance, which would bring up the efficiency overall. Also keep in mind that 60 miles an hour is relatively fast, so as this car slows down, it will get more efficient. So let's compare that to a Tesla Model 3 long range. The Model 3 weighs 1,847 kilograms and it has an EPA rating of 354 miles. It has a drag coefficient of 0.23 and a frontal area of 2.22 meters squared. We're going to use the same exact equations from earlier with the new numbers for the Model 3 and we see that we need a total of 12.687 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance and air resistance at 60 miles an hour. If you plug that into the pack size at 79.5 kilowatt hours, we see that we can do 6.27 hours of driving at a constant 60 miles an hour. If we have 100% powertrain efficiency, that'll give us a range of roughly 376 miles. But if we're gonna use that 94% efficiency that we used for the Aptera calculation, we can see that range drops to 354 miles, which is exactly the EPA rating. That was a ton of math and equations, but I do want to show you all the other variations. So Aptera is making a 25 kilowatt hour, 40 kilowatt hour, 60 kilowatt hour, and 100 kilowatt hour version. We just went through all the math on the 100 kilowatt hour version. Instead of going through the numbers for each version, I'm going to utilize the simulation, which uses the exact same equations. It just has slightly different and more advanced rolling resistance calculation, but it's very similar to the constant we used in the previous examples. Using methods I described at the beginning of the video, I went ahead and calculated weights of all the different versions. Versions. I'll also put the efficiencies on the screen. We are just touching that 100 watt hours per mile efficiency, but as you can see, it's not linear because we are adding weight to the cars as battery pack size is increasing. I've gone ahead and set up a simulated quarter mile drag race with these three cars. So we have the 25 kilowatt hour on top, 40 kilowatt hour in middle, and 60 kilowatt hour on bottom. We can see the 25 kilowatt hour, zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. This is the front wheel drive version. And for quarter mile, we see 13.1, 13.4, and 13.9. All of these versions are using the same exact torque curve. They're just different weights because of the battery pack as we've gone through previously. I imagine Aptera will do something like Tesla does where they're gonna electronically limit these battery pack versions that are lighter. It wouldn't make sense for them to sell a cheaper car with a smaller battery that's actually faster. Let's see how fast the all-wheel drive versions are side by side. I set up the quarter mile drag race with the all-wheel drive versions, same as before. We see a 3.140 to 60 in the 25 kilowatt hour version with one foot rollout subtracted, 3.4 in the 40 kilowatt hour version, and 3.7 in the 60 kilowatt hour version. Seven minutes into the video, and I haven't even talked about the solar panels on these cars. Let's talk about the solar panels, and let's see how that's going to change the game for these. So let's see how much range these solar panels are going to add. So we're going to use an example. We're going to take our 123 watt hours per mile consumption. We're going to say we're going to go for as long as we possibly can at a constant speed of 60 miles an hour. We see that that'll give us 13.55 hours of driving. We know that the solar panels create a peak of 700 watts in this car, so that means that if if they charge for one hour in direct sunlight, that'll produce 700 watt hours of power. For this trip, we're gonna assume that we're only getting 50% of the efficiency for the whole time. So we plug in the numbers and we see that through that 13 and a half hour trip, we get 4.7 kilowatt hours of extra power, which is equivalent to 39 miles of range. So this would bring range to around 850 miles, and this is at highway speeds of 60 miles an hour. Remember that because of aerodynamic drag, if you drop this car down to 40 or 50 miles an hour, it'll easily reach that thousand mile an hour range mark. This also has me thinking, do you really need a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack? Who's gonna drive for 12, 13, 14 hours continuously? It seems like the hundred kilowatt hour version is kind of overkill, and it's also just adding weight to the car that you don't need. I think it only makes sense for them to sell up to the 60 kilowatt hour version, but that's just my opinion. Maybe there's some use cases that I'm not thinking about. Another really cool thing about this car is if you use those rolling resistance and air resistance formulas we talked about earlier, you can calculate how fast this car could go indefinitely using just solar power. So if you assume the car is getting the full 700 watts of power, it could actually drive at 12 miles an hour. And this is for the 100 kilowatt hour version that's heavier than the others. It's cool to go 12 miles an hour indefinitely, but let's figure out how we could go at highway speeds with only solar power. So 
So we're going to use the app Terra Specs as far as aerodynamics go, but we are going to add some curb weight because this thing's going to be big. Just wait. So we're going to use 2,500 pound curb weight. So we know that the app Terra produces 700 watts of solar power with peak sun, and that's with three square meters of solar panels. This comes out to 233 watts per square meters. So how much solar would we need at 50 miles an hour? Well, with the 2,500 pound curb weight, using the formulas I went through earlier, we know that we need 5,500 watts of power to sustain that speed. If you divide 233 into 5,500, you see that we need 23 square meters of solar panels or about 254 square feet. At 70 miles an hour, this jumps up to 10.1 kilowatts of power required. And if you do the math, you see that you need 467 square feet or 43 square meters of solar panels. So let's take the 50 mile an hour example. The current car is 172 inches long and it has three square meters of solar. So if we keep the width of the car the same, and we're gonna assume that we can fit the same amount of solar panels per unit area of the car, we're gonna just extend the length, and we realize that we need almost eight times the length to fit all this solar. So that comes out to the car being 112 foot long at that same width that the Aptera currently is. Clearly that's not realistic, that's longer than a semi truck. What we could do is increase width, but as you can see, solar panels to power cars all on their own is not very realistic. In the future, if Aptera does make a bigger car like a sedan, maybe they can incorporate a smaller battery pack and a lot more solar panels per unit area. This would create a really long range while requiring less battery size. If you like the video and you want to see another one just like it, you can click here. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe. Please enjoy the content and I'll see you guys next time.